everyone. Thank you so much for stopping by my channel, Sewing Machine Rehab. You might be here because you were already at my Etsy shop, So So She Goes, where currently I have this beautiful Singer 99 listed for sale. So if you like what you're seeing or you just want to know what I have coming up next, please subscribe to my channel. I try to at least post videos of the machines that I am selling, uh, really to give the opportunity for a potential buyer to just see how a machine is going to work once they get it home. So this is a Singer Model 99. It does have reverse sewing, which is done with this little stitch length knob right here. Uh, up at the top is once you pass this line, that's where you get your reverse or back tack. And then adjustable stitch length from six stitches per inch all the way up to 30, which is pretty fabulous. So this particular machine was rescued out of a uh, old sewing cabinet, which two things, it, it didn't look very nice anymore. And also I ship my machines um, a lot of places I have a machine that is going to Fiji right now, which was really kind of cool and uh, surprising. But anyway, um, so shipping a cabinet isn't feasible. So when I brought it home, I didn't have a base for it and it does need a base in order to run. And I thought, well, whoever's going to have this machine next, I want them to be able to unbox it, set it up and just sew. That meant I needed a base, and I found someone to make me a base for it, um, and this machine had the hardware that I needed already. It bolts into the back of the base, and um, I painted it black, and I added some cool uh, permanent vinyl decals and I kind of kept that art deco style that we see in the uh, singer decals on these beautiful black machines so I don't know if I'll ever do it again but it was really fun and I guess now I know what to do when I have a machine that doesn't have the base that it needs uh, anyway this uh, particular machine was completely taken apart I uh, took the motor apart checked the brushes, I cleaned the motor. Um, there was lots of carbon dust and things like that. Uh, the tension was dismantled. The feed dogs were dismantled. Anything that I could do, I did. And all of my reward for that hard work is really going to be summarized in the stitch samples that you will see here momentarily. So. Uh, along with this really cool base, I will include a box of attachments that you would have gotten with this machine if you had purchased it new. And these are um, the low shank attachments that this machine would take. And in this box is every foot that would have come with it originally. I also am including three metal class 66 bobbins. So that is the kind of bobbin that this machine takes. And fortunately, they're on the market today. You can buy new ones. The plastic ones will work with these machines as well. A lot of times you can just go to your local fabric store and find them there. So three will get you started, but you'll probably want to add more to your collection. Um, let me show you quickly before I switch over to the... Um, sewing part of this demo because this machine is in a base and because uh, machines like this need uh, oiling on all of their moving parts i just wanted to show you how uh, with this base you just are able to hold the machine and the base you can lift it up and access all of the oiling points that you need to get to every once in a while just to keep it running smoothly and inside that base and it's a heavy machine. These are made out of cast iron, so they're pretty strong. But inside the bottom of this base, I also put in a industrial type felt liner in the bottom, uh, just to catch any little drips or whatever, if you tend to over oil just a little bit. Um, that's about it. Uh, I did check 
uh, the serial number on this machine, and it is um, AM050948. And what that can tell us is that this machine was made in 1955. Um, so it's older than me, and that's all I will tell you about my age. Anyway, so if you're interested in seeing how it says, give me just a moment and we will get started. Okay, so I have set up to where you can hopefully see uh, some stitching on this machine. And uh, I wanted to point out, I did install a new LED light bulb, which that is it on. I uh, am including the original foot pedal with this machine and I'm only doing that because it actually functions really well. I totally took it apart and I mean totally took it apart. That means I took out over a hundred little carbon discs that are inside and cleaned them and put them back in. Uh, just so I can make sure that you have the best speed control possible out of one of the older button style foot pedals that this machine came with. I replaced the plug end of the machine. So the wiring in this particular machine goes right into the motor and the plug end that plugs into the outlet was in very bad shape. In fact, I didn't even test this machine before I replaced the plug because I just wouldn't. I don't want to get electrocuted. So I did find a really cool uh, vintage style plug. Uh, there's a company, they're called Snakehead Vintage, and they make excellent uh, vintage replicas of plugs that would look more like what you would find on this machine. And if you look in my Etsy shop, I do try to include a picture that has the plug showing in it if you want to see it. Uh, so anyway, I will start out sewing just on two or a, a piece of cotton that's folded over. So two layers of just your basic cotton. And we'll start out at the longest stitch length and then we'll move down to some of the finer stitches. You'll see uh, that I'll go slow and fast when I sew. That's really just to demonstrate you can do either when you're sewing. So let's just get started. So this is the slower speed and let's move it to the end here, spin it around. And then I'm going to tighten up a little bit for a finer stitch. We'll move it up to about 10. Sorry about that, bump the camera. Nice and slow. Or you can just go super fast. I never could go super fast when I was sewing a project. I would just mess up. So I'm going to move it to the finest stitch that I can get out of this machine, which is 30 stitches per inch. Just give it a little more tension to. So you can hear how it sounds, it sounds great. I was worried about it being a little echoey uh, with this wooden base, but I don't know if the felt drip pad maybe absorbs a little bit of sound. Uh, it probably does. But when you have all the parts oiled and everything working properly, it should sound really great when it sews. Um, so here's the top of our fabric. So this would be our upper thread uh, running through the needle. And you can see how beautiful it is. Uh, down here we have the six stitches per inch, inch sorry, the longest stitch. And then here is, uh, I think I did 10. And then here is the really fine, gorgeous stitching, 30 stitches per inch. Now, the real test is flipping it over and looking at the back side of the fabric and you really don't see a difference from front to back. So all of the tensions are properly set. You just get a gorgeous stitch. Uh, also a good test is to just kind of pull it apart and give it a tug. If you start seeing a lot of thread 
uh, on the middle here, then you know maybe your tension is too loose, but that is not the case. Beautiful. So another uh, sample I can show you is, I have a little quilt sandwich. Um, these machines, the Model 99s, I know people will even sew garment leather with them, uh, which I do not have, but I have a few other things we can test out. So this is just a quilt sandwich, and I actually was playing around earlier, so there's a couple of stitches on here already. Um, I wanted to do my final test before I shot this video. I'm gonna take it down to about eight stitches per inch. Um, loosen my foot pressure a little bit so I can kind of do a little curving and uh, fancy stitching. And we'll just... It just glides along. I've done a little bit of free motion quilting, not a lot, so it's not something I'm super talented at doing. So um, here is the stitch that I just made. It runs along like this, and you can see how beautiful it is. That's eight stitches per inch. And the back side, still gorgeous. Uh, you can tell I ripped out seams on this. I've used this quilt sandwich for other machines as well. So anyway, that is a, a layer of fabric, a layer of batting, and then another layer of fabric. Last, um, my daughter got all of her old jeans out that don't fit her anymore. And um, I've found some really good uses for them. Uh, when I rehab these machines. So next I will just show you how it works on denim, particularly uh, how it's going to transition over these multiple layers that you get when you have pockets and uh, the heavy seams that are in denim. And I will keep this at about an eight because that is really mimicking the stitch length that's already here. Uh, tension I'm not gonna change, I might put my foot down or my presser foot down a little tighter and let's go you will notice it does not struggle to go over these thicker layers it doesn't even really sound different there's a lot of denim there I'm just gonna turn it don't want to run off the edge Oh, sit down. So let's see what this looks like now. There's a thread cutter uh, back here. I'm just not in the habit of using it. That's probably because I've worked with modern sewing machines for so long. Um, I forget that it's there. So hopefully this will show up so you can see it. But this is eight stitches per inch, and you can see as it moved over the different layers of denim, the stitch quality is just beautiful. You didn't see the machine struggle at all. They're so powerful, and this is just a standard needle as well. So now if I turn this over, Try to follow along here so you can see. This is the back side where the bobbin thread comes through. It's gorgeous, and I probably picked the wrong color of thread. So I did not show you uh, reverse stitching. Let me just show you that really quickly. Um, we'll leave it where it's at as far as the stitch length, but when you um, are back, tacking if you will you would just be sewing along and you can actually set your stitch length by turning this little knob so when you uh, move up and then back down it stops where you want it to so that means you don't need to look here when you want to back tack so you would start sewing go into reverse and then back into 
standard sewing. And I will just show you what that looks like too, and then we'll be done. So there you go, your stitch with your back tack. And that's the back. So I think it turned out great. Um, the overall condition of this machine, as far as the paint, there is a little bit of chipping on the bed that you can see. Uh, over here in the neck, um, people would, you know, be sewing and they pull the pins out of their fabric and just lay them down. And these little tiny chips are from whoever used this machine over the years, constantly pulling the pins out, laying them down, nicking the, the paint as they did it. So it's not uncommon to find this on a machine that was used a lot. Overall, the, the rest of the decals on the machine, uh, the back of the machine is in really uh, great shape. All of the original lacquer finish is pretty much still on the machine. So after I cleaned it, I put a nice uh, coating of wax and I use, um, it's called Zymol, I believe. I just, I love that wax. It's a carnauba wax. Uh, so hopefully that's answered any questions you have. Um, if it hasn't, please just leave me a comment below or go over to my Etsy shop. So, so she goes, find the machi uh, machine there and send me a message. I um, am so glad you stopped by and I hope you have a great day. Bye.